In this video, I'm going to introduce to you three of my favorite photo books. Hi everyone and welcome back to the channel. This is Dylan Goldby. Uh, it's been a little while since I uploaded, a couple of weeks I believe. I've been taking a little bit of a break from all forms of social media just to sort of reset and get my, uh, get my brain back in the game as it were. And so this afternoon I'm actually sitting out enjoying a new photo book that has just arrived which is uh, The Cowboys of Central Montana, 50 Portraits by Robert Osborne. And I haven't really had too much of a chance to sort of dig deep into this book yet but it looks great. Uh, so I thought what I'd do is basically talk you guys through three of my favorite photo books, sort of why I choose them, uh, and what, what I look for when I'm going out to, to get myself a new photo book. So of course we can get a lot from photo books. We can learn a lot about how a photographer approaches the world. Uh, we can learn a little bit about technique. We can sort of learn about composition. We can learn about light. We can learn about use of color and things like that. But for me, what I look for when I'm looking to, to put a book on my shelf is something that gives me a little bit more. So a photo book that tells me a little bit more about the subject matter and a little bit more about uh, what that photographer is trying to express or the experiences that they've had. So while a great photograph says, you know, hey, look at this, this is something you should definitely pay attention to, and it holds your attention and allows you to learn from it, and in, you know, it has great light or it has great composition and things like that. For me, I like a photo book that I can dig a little bit deeper than just photography. The first book that I'd like to talk about is a book called It's All Good by Boogie. Now, Boogie is a documentary photographer of sorts. He's sort of a visual storyteller and his books typically focus on uh, a topic that he sort of dives deep into and does this sort of long-term project that then becomes a, a bit of a book. Uh, for example, his book Belgrade Belongs to Me was his sort of exploration of, uh, oh, you know, his home city. Uh, this It's All Good is a deep dive into uh, the, the gangsters and drug dealers and, uh, and drug addicts of New York City and so he spent a lot of time uh, being with these people, becoming trusted by these people and then being able to make photographs of them. The entire book is this sort of gritty black and white almost, uh, it, it's a loaded word but almost a snapshot in quality. It feels like Boogie is just capturing these slices of time. They're not uh, you're never going to sit back and look at one of Boogie's images and think, wow, you know, he spent a good couple of hours refining that composition and making sure the light was perfect. That's not really what his photographs do. He spends a lot of time uh, exploring his subjects, uh, getting them to trust him and being able to photograph them uh, in a very raw, very authentic kind of way to use another couple of sort of cliche words. But Boogie's work tends to expose the subject rather than expose his prowess as a photographer. You're never going to look at it and say, you know, wow, he used the latest and greatest lens to get the sharpest possible image. That's definitely not what you're going to get from Boogie's work. And there's not a single image in this book that's going to make you sort of step back and go, that is an absolute masterpiece. Boogie's work is all about this storytelling, this arc of being able to show you uh, a side of the world that maybe you wouldn't normally have access to. I mean, not many of us are accepted into the community of gangsters and drug dealers. This is not something that a lot of us can, can get into. And I think that's where a lot of Boogie's talent lies, is that he's just an excellent human being who can uh, show empathy for others and, and get in the door where nobody else could normally get into. So it's a really, really great book. But as I mentioned, uh, I like to have a photo book that goes a little bit deeper. And inside this book, Boogie has actually put a few stories that have been transcribed verbatim from the people that he, he photographed and spent all this time with. And so there's a good maybe 12 or 16 pages or so in this book. They're literally just people telling their own stories in their own words. And the images themselves can stand on their own and they would be a great book. But with those stories, you get to go a little bit deeper and really understand uh, and empathize with the people that Boogie was working with to make this book, so absolutely recommended. The second book I'd like to talk about is uh, We Came From Fire by Joey Lawrence. Now, Joey L probably needs no introduction in the photographic community. Uh, we all know him from his, his commercial portraits or his, uh, his work with bands when he was, when he was much younger or his uh, series on the, the holy men uh, and more recently his sort of 
uh, a humanitarian focused work and this I think is a, a book that kind of bridges the two uh, the two styles or the two approaches that, that Joey Lawrence has taken over the years uh, in the sense that this is a, a documentary uh, human story that he's telling here but the the work in here the, the photos in here are extremely polished like what you might find in say some of his commercial work and so that's what initially drew me to this book we can all learn something from from Joey L from you know his compassion for for other human beings uh, his lighting his use of contrast um, his framing his composition all of these things I think we can all learn something from and that's initially like I just wanted to sit there and be awed by what was in this book but when I got it and I flipped through, you know, you get through and I f you feel everything that's in this book. You feel uh, the plight of the Kurds. This is about the, um, the Kurdish people and their, their, uh, their situation during the, uh, the recent uh, conflicts in the Middle East. So with the Syrian civil war and, and Turkey and Russia and all of those things going on there and just what it was like for them to be there. And that's sort of what this is about. Um, but then you get through all of that and you, you learn a lot from these pictures and you, you gain a little uh, understanding of each of the people who's in the book and perhaps a little bit of what they've gone through. But then at the end of the book, uh, you know, Joey dedicates 20 odd pages to the to history of the Kurdish people and their, you know, being designated as a terrorist organization and trying to find their own nation state, um, the role of women in the in the militia and things like that. And then he goes on to just double that up and talk about his own experiences of you know, getting into Syria during the war, crossing the border and having the border guards just sort of, you know, make jokes at him and say, you, you have no, uh, no RPGs, no bombs in your, in your camera cases and just things like that. And then, you know, sitting down with his, um, his, uh, his translator, his fixer at the time, looking through the man's uh, Nikon P600 at ISIS soldiers. Um, because it's a, a super zoom, it's, it's one of the series that I think the Flat Earthers use to determine that the Earth is definitely not a sphere. Um, but it's, it's a super zoom camera and so he's able to actually look through and he describes the feeling of basically sitting there looking at what the world's news is, is basically talking about right now and, and these atrocities that are being, uh, I guess, visited upon, up, upon humans on this Earth and he's able to sit there and just look at them through this super zoom camera. And so those sorts of little experiences are, I think, what really uh, makes this book very, very interesting to me. As you know, I myself, uh, when I work on my Tattoos of Asia project, I go to live in, in villages uh, with people who you know, don't get to see the outside world a lot. Now, it's certainly not a war zone, um, but I can understand how difficult things can be to get done on a day-to-day -day basis or just the little experiences that you have uh, that you may forget about until you actually start going back over the work or looking at your notes and things like that. And he's included all of that in the book, which just makes it an absolutely excellent purchase and another one that's highly recommended. Uh, the final book I want to talk about is called Soul Modern Times. Now this is by a, or it's a posthumous book by uh, Han yong a photographer in Korea. Uh, this has been compiled by a local agency that uh, has, I guess, control over all of his images. They, they take care of them. And it's been uh, printed in a series that perhaps he didn't get to choose, but it was, it's been put together and it's a, it's a story of all of his images. And what this is, is it's sort of a, if you think, um, I guess, uh, Cartier-Bresson and he's documenting the changes in France uh, and then you maybe think uh, somebody like Van Ho and his use of uh, light and composition if you sort of take pieces of those two photographers and then put them together and maybe uh, not quite on the level of Elliot Erwitt but there's certainly a little bit of humor and a little bit of social commentary in there as well he, he doesn't shy away from from photographing sort of uh, things that he finds interesting and finds a little bit humorous. And so for me, what really makes this book interesting is, uh, well, it does have a whole uh, lot of, uh, of text in it, just like the other books. And it, it's written by somebody else. It's not written by the photographer. It's sort of a critique of his work um, or, a, or an exploration of it by a critic. And personally, I don't feel like it adds a lot to the actual book itself. So for me, what, what really makes this book is the fact that all of these places are, are still here. And so this is pre-K-pop, pre-K-food, pre-K-drop, pre-K-anything. Um, it is the, the times when Korea was sort of post-war coming out of this being one of the poorest nations into the world and building itself into this economic technological powerhouse that it is today. And so it's very much looking at the, the raw human life in the streets and just 
juxtaposing the old and the new and it's a very interesting look at the city that I live in, to, in, in today and so for me to, to basically look at the places that I visit now in the way that they looked 50 or 60 years ago um, and the way that people behaved 50 or 60 years ago is really, really interesting. So for me, that's sort of a, a deep exploration of the place that I live. I mean, I've lived here for 15 years and I've seen on a day-to-day -day basis how much this place can change, but this is decades ago. And so it's a very, very interesting book in that respect. It's quite difficult to get. I will put an Amazon link below, but it's usually out of stock or very, very expensive. Uh, if you do speak Korean, you can probably order it from the uh, designers here. They do keep copies of it, but again, it tends to sell out pretty quickly when it's, uh, when it's published. So this is, I think, the fourth edition, um, and I managed to just get one just as it came out. All right, I hope you've enjoyed my short exploration of three of my favorite photo books from my shelf. Um, these are just my interpretations. You may not agree with them. Uh, you may have recommendations of your own. And uh, if you do, I'd love to see them in the comments. And I'm sure we can all benefit from perhaps hearing about some photo books that we haven't otherwise heard of. So please do leave those in the comments below. If you've enjoyed the video, give it a thumbs up. If you haven't already, please subscribe to the channel and we'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.